Hello YouTube friends. It's a beautiful sunny late February morning here. In fact tomorrow is March and tomorrow is March the 1st which marks 35 years of me living in this house. Which is quite a long time isn't it? Now there's lots of things I want to talk about today and the first one is uh, the flowers that I got through the post. I order a bunch of flowers every month and so I made a little bit of film and that's going to come in here now. So we'll we'll have a look at that bit of film next. This has just arrived. I get a box of flowers once a month from this company and I haven't opened this one yet so I've no idea what's in this one. And so let's open it up together. We've got um, the ballet class. It's always called something and themed as something. So let's uh, let's open up the ballet class, shall we? Are you too far away? I can put you a bit nearer. Yeah, let's get you a little bit nearer for this. Is that better? Let's see if it is. That's about if I take it out of the box. Put it on the table. Okay, now then, let's see what we got. We've got, um, oh, now that's interesting. We've got tulips that have got their bulb on still. I've never, I've never looked after a, a plant from the bulb to the flower in a bunch of flowers before. And it's got a care tip here. It says, we've left the bulb on for you to chop off your and plant later in the year. How cool is that? So I've got some um, I've got some bulbs that I can plant later on, and they look really good. And then this stuff. Let me tell you what all of these are. Okay. Oh, they're going to have weird names that I can't pronounce. But these just look like snapdragons, don't they? But they, they aren't. They're, oh, they are. They're snapdragons. I'm right about that. So they're snapdragons there. And then we've got a load of greenery, which is called Green Bell, which is lovely. Bit of greenery there. And then this stuff, which is... What's this called now? Alstrom something. Yeah, and it says also I should have some iris in here, but I can't see any iris. But then I've got these weird looking things that have got sort of like, that like um, dumplings. <laughs> and so very, very, very carefully peel the protection off these. And the thing about these flowers is, I mean, these will look fantastic tomorrow <laughs> when they've all opened out. So this one is called, um, um, they're just called blooms and there should be three of those, but there are no irises. Oh yes, there are. I see the irises. They're all packed in, in tightly. So I'll just take this little thing off carefully here. Whoops, a daisy. There we go. Oh, they look very, very delicate and they're all fine. None of them are snapped off. Uh, which is amazing when you think that they've travelled through the post. Well, by carrier, anyway. So those are those three, which are tightly closed up blooms. And then here's my irises. They were hiding at the bottom. And these are beautiful blue irises, three of those. Now, and some food. <laughs> so what they do is they give you um, an arrangement guide. Now... This is great for me because I'm no flower arranger, not at all. And so I'm going to follow the arrangement guide and uh, stick them uh, in the vase like they say. And then the bulbs, snip the flowers off the bulb to put in your vase along with your flowers. Now you need to keep the bulb safe and dry until October. The best place to keep them is upright in the bottom drawer of your fridge. We can manage that till October. Then we'll plant them out. 
<laughs> Let's see how that works, shall we? Okay, so we got the secateurs here. And the first thing I'm going to do then is chop off the bulbs. This feels very strange. And we'll put those in a paper bag. Plastic wouldn't be good for them. We'll store those in the fridge. Um, until October. Am I going to remember they're there? I don't know. I hope so. <laughs> Let's pop those to one side. Now, last month, because I just get these once a month. And last month... Uh, the vases over there, I mean, they all need throwing away because they're over a month old. But the reason why I haven't thrown them away is that one of the things in last month's Freddy's Flowers was something called Twisted Willow, which uh, in, the, uh, in the notes it says uh, this will sprout in your vase, which it has, uh, and you can plant it. So I'm going to plant the Twisted Willow in the garden, give that vase a wash out and then put these new flowers in there now. So I'm going to do that and uh, we'll do it together on the draining board, I think, because I've got to do quite a bit of, I'm not a very good flower arranger, but we'll we'll do this. I think it'll be fantastic. I would especially want to get the twisted willow out and get that planted in the garden. So come on, we'll go, we'll go over to the draining board and do it because it's going to make a lot more mess over there. So I've emptied out last month's flowers from this vase here and giving it a bit of a clean we'll use that in a minute to arrange the new ones but just before i do this is the twisted willow um willow grows so prolifically you just stick it in the ground and the then the roots shoot out look look at the roots that have just come from being in a vase of flowers here and it's shooting beautifully so i'm going to put these are uh, how many uh six of them so i'm going to put these into um a vase just to keep the roots nice and wet. And then I'm gonna go outside and plant those, but not just now, I'm gonna do the flowers now. Okay, so this is a massive vase. And, and we don't really need that, do we? No, this is a huge vase, but it's good because I think the flowers look good in it. And what I've got in the bottom third is a load of marbles and shells and bits and pieces like that, because they, I like, firstly, it raises the flowers up a little bit, but also it anchors the stalks where I want them. So uh, I, I like to use those. Right, we're going to bring the flowers over then. Now, massive disclaimer to anybody who's watching who knows about arranging flowers. I don't. I have no idea. I just know that I love flowers. I think they're really beautiful, but I'm not going to um, win any prizes for my flower arrangements. But that's why I'm going to follow this little guide here. So step one, start with the fabulous blooms arranged around the edge of your vase. OK, now I, I always like to cut the bottom off. Like that with my secateurs. And as well, if there are going to be any leaves below the in the water, I just take the odd leaf off. These look a bit tatty. Might take that off as well. So this is what the marbles help me do take that off too. They just help me wedge it so that that's not going to move anywhere. And so we'll take another of these. They're just calling these blooms. I'm sure they've got a better name than that. They are pretty though, aren't they? They're going to open out beautifully. And so we're going to go in thirds. Odd numbers of things in flowers. In most things looks really lovely, doesn't it? And I've got odd numbers of everything here. These are really manky looking leaves though. Okay, so just take the bottom off that one, stick it in there. There we go. Great. Okay, and the next, the one that I can't pronounce, which is, um, where did that go now? Not the snapdragons. These two. Are there only two of those? Yep, there's only supposed to be two, and there are. I'll just take these. These are lovely. Look at them. Aren't they beautiful? They're going to look lovely when they when they come out. My willow's fighting with my... So again, just snip those off and they go... Uh, well, not... Okay. 
opposite each other. OK, I can do that. So they're going to go opposite each other like that. And again, into my marbles. OK, next, the Snapdragons. Snapdragons. Now, these have got quite a few leaves at the bottom. And if the leaves end up under the water, they just sort of start rotting uh, a bit. So where are we going, Snapdragons? Oh, I think we can guess, can't we? In the spaces where the white blooms aren't. There. That's where they're going. So a few little leaves off the Snapdragons here. And uh, I mean, all you flower arrangers, don't worry. Don't worry, they're just going to look pretty. I know I'm no good at this. One, two, three. It's called the ballet class, this bunch, which is a lovely name. And they go there like that. Uh, yeah, that's good. Looking good so far. Next, it says your iris. And the iris is here. OK. Get rid of these papery leaves on the outside and uh, you, you kind of guess where the iris are going. Took uh, the, the, the uh, iris. Yeah, they're just, well, let me read it. Dot your irises throughout, okay? <laughs> dot, dot, dot. 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 Lovely. They'll be lovely when they come out. They'll be blue and got beautiful colour. And these are purpley too. And then uh, tuck your shorter tulips evenly around the edge so they will grow 10 centimetres length. So don't worry if they look a little short. OK, they're meant to grow a little bit more. Well, I wonder if that'll happen. So we'll just pop those. I won't stick those into the marbles. I'll just dot them about. There we go. And then the thing that brings it all together is this stuff that they're calling green bell here. And again, I'll just give the ends a free trim. And I'm guessing that that goes in the middle. Finish with it in the very centre. So we're going to shove that right down there. I'll get my hand in actually so that I can anchor that into my marbles there and then we'll open that out so that it looks like that and I think that looks gorgeous and they're going to sit on the table over here oh I'll just put one of these in actually just cut the top off it's easier I'll pop that into the water one for when I refresh the water later in the week and next week. Already these white things have come out a bit, haven't they? Ah, oh, they're lovely. I like this month's. Be interesting to see what they do. Let's get that snapdragon a bit better. Bit of a lovely purple tulip. Well, I think that's a lovely a lovely little bunch of flowers, big bunch of flowers. Just let me get this tulip a bit better. Oh, that's OK. Now I'm going to, it's very heavy. I'm going to lift it over to the middle of the room. <laughs> ah. I'm going to enjoy watching those open out and uh, dance their way through the next couple of weeks with me. They're lovely. I like them very much. So a few years ago, maybe eight years ago, nine years ago, I did a permaculture course over a few weekends and learned all about different aspects of permaculture. Very basic course, but I learned loads and it was really, really interesting. 
I think I'm not going to talk too much about that because there are hundreds of channels on YouTube who all practice permaculture and talk about permaculture in a much more detailed way than I do. But I do um, use permaculture principles sometimes in some ways in the garden. Now, briefly, the whole idea of setting up um, a garden and a, you know, way, a place that you live uh, is to do with zones. And there are five zones, zones one, two, three, four and five. Zone one being immediately around your house so that it's right outside your back door. The one that you visit several times a day. So for me, my zone one is, is the hens and the compost heap and the immediate garden. Now, zone five, then, the furthest out uh, of these zones, if you imagine them as concentric circles, for me, that's um, it's somewhere that I visit once a year. Uh, and it's right down at the bottom of what I call the front woods here. Here in uh, at, at this bit of garden that I have, the piece in front of the garden is uh, very, very wet because it's below the level of the lake here that Eileen likes to swim on when it gets a bit warmer. Uh, and it's very wet and sumpy underfoot. And there's really n nothing you could do. You couldn't really um, properly grow things down there, but it is very good for growing trees that like uh, wet, like willow and alder. And uh, so many, many years ago, I planted um, willow, uh, basically by getting pieces of willow that are about that size and sticking them in the ground. So once a year, I like to go down and see how the trees that I planted are doing. But also from that flower arranging clip there, I've got all that twisted willow that I want to find a place to just heal into the ground and let that grow up in that beautiful um, corkscrew way that it does. So I want to go outside with you now. And I'm really fortunately, Anna, my daughter-in-law, who is uh, in my bubble, uh, is here today. And so she said that she'll hold the camera uh, and, and do some filming for me, which is just brilliant because it's very hard to film yourself uh, sometimes when you're doing out and about things. OK, so the next thing we're going to do then, we're just going to nip outside and have a look at the at my zone five and see how uh, the things are doing once a year. That's the only time I go out there. So it's a beautiful sunny day today, but it's very, very cold. Uh, and so I'm just going to go and get wrapped up, coat, boots and all of that. And, and I'll see you uh, outside in a minute. So I'm all warm. I've got my willow here. It's fantastic roots on here. But before we go down and have a look at the front woods, just come and look at the bulbs that I planted last year. Because the iris are out now, just a couple of them. And the crocuses are going mad here. And the daffodils are just starting to peep up. So just come and have a close look at those. They're pretty. A couple of iris. I love irises. I really do. about those permaculture zones then we're getting into the wilds now and this bridge here with the willow I look at this every year and um, if we could have a little closer look at the knots that I tie in the willow so you can see this is one that I tied many years ago and this one will be last year's uh, and so I'm not going to do this today but I'll come down sometime soon and tie some more knots in here and uh, keep my knotted hedge going. Now very soon I won't be able to walk through here because the brambles and the bracken all grow wild here and it's really hard to um, to make a pathway through here uh, but I, I can get through now and I'm going to take you over to where the willow that I planted, I don't know, maybe, I'm going to say maybe eight or nine years ago over here. And as I said to you earlier, they were just 
lengths of willow about this long. But come and see what's happened to them. They're just over here. Very um, hard under, uh, underfoot here. Just look at these willow now. They're 30 foot tall. And these are very good at drying up the soil underneath uh, the ground here so that um, they stabilize the soil a bit with their roots. Now, I had an idea that I might plant my willow out here somewhere. It's a good spot. Should we just plant it somewhere here? Yeah, go on. Doesn't really matter where. The ground is so awesome. Look at that. This is just leaf litter and being left alone absolutely fantastic ground so I'm just going to dig a uh, big enough hole to put the root in push it right down and then we'll pretty much forget about it because they'll just do their own thing and I've got six I'm just going to plant them uh, I'm just going to plant them maybe a, a yard apart see how wet it is here but don't worry because willow love that get another one of these and they can all live together with the other willow quite happily they can be a little a little thicket of twisted willow absolutely sodden mind you it has been very wet and rainy as well as the fact that the lake is right up there above my head and so this doesn't stand a chance of ever drying out okay i'll stick the last one in there so next year when i do my my zone one my zone five walk we'll see how they've done let's show you some of the tree guards and if there's anything growing up in them i hope there is come on let's have a look success then. This is one of the olders. It's growing really well. I'll still keep the tree guard on it though because um, rabbits may eat them but my bigger problem is deer. Deer live just in the woods over there and they come they come and spend the summer in here. So deer just eat the top off things but some of them are managing and I want to show you my big success over here okay, so this is right here I planted this it was this big maybe two foot uh, what however many years maybe eight nine years ago when I did my permaculture course after that I bought all these trees as small little bare rooted plants and look at it now isn't it amazing this the tree guard could come off this but I haven't got uh, anything to take it off with. Now here's another one that might be a failure. There's a tree guard right next to it. And if you look down inside there, there's nothing at all. Just a weed. So, a bit of a failure. But once I start walking around here, and I see different tree guards, I usually go around and have a look at as many as I can get to. And um, I'm always very pleased when I see successes like that. But even if they're quite small and still growing, it's very exciting. I like it very much. But soon this will be impossible to walk through. And there are deer living in here. I have a pair of deer every year that come and live here uh, in, in this little patch of scrappy woodland. The front woods. It's where the tree house is. So once uh, the whole pandemic's over and people can travel, it might be that uh, we can give the treehouse a good spring clean and get some visitors back in there again. That would be nice. Oh, my word, look at this. This is one of mine. 
That's even better than that one. Oh, and that. Oh, this is so exciting. There's one of mine. And this one, if I could get anywhere near it. So this is what happens when the when the trunks push the tree guard apart. They're so thin, the plastic, they they just rip like that. So we'll see if we can liberate this one. That's another birch. I am so pleased with that tree. It's very exciting planting trees. Another one. This is a hazel. It's one of mine. Oh, I feel encouraged to keep going because I can see one down there. I was going to say here's one that hasn't made it, but actually the leader that's coming up there has got a little green tip on it. That's an alder, so we'll just leave that alone. That's good. Excellent. So this is hard going. Uh, and so I'm going to battle my way back to the house now. Zone five, very rarely visited. It's good though, isn't it? If you, if you look at where I'm looking, you can see that there's some mature trees here and then some little bits of new growth coming through that has either self-seeded or I've planted. And then that fantastic willow there. And this is habitat to so many things, including one rather beautiful cat. She follows me all around the garden, Sadie. Even down here, what are you doing down there? She says, why are we going down here? Come on, Sadie, you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, she's my outdoors cat. So I'm going to crack on along there now and then go back up through to the, to the garden. And then we've got, uh, she's got some more interesting things that I want to do with you today. Hi, Sadie. Come on, let's go. So I've come back in, taken all my outdoor clothes off and I'm going to do a little bit of cooking now, but I'll explain why I'm going to do a little bit of cooking. OK, um, I got a few comments recently that says, uh, what is the lime green sofa? What is the LGS? And so I thought I'd describe a little bit about what, what goes on on the lime green sofa. It's to fully understand it, you would actually have to be inside my head, which is a really interesting place sometimes and quite um, busy. <laughs> Way back in the lockdown, I, when we were all of us in a bit of a, a worrying time, we were all kind of like a little bit concerned about what was going on on the whole planet. And I was doing those videos where I was just touching base with you every day, those little taking care videos. In fact, I'll leave a playlist um, to the taking care videos if anybody wants to watch them and so um, what I found was that the people who engaged in the comments I was answering comments and I was liking comments but they were talking to each other as well and it gave me this idea that what we were building was a community I've always felt that that since this channel has been growing and growing, that we've got an, a really amazing community of all you people who do these fantastic crafts and have got the same kind of interests. You know, you've usually got a cat or a dog, haven't you? Be honest. And I invented this idea of the fact that we weren't just down in the comments, which wasn't really a place, but we were sitting on a really comfortable sofa, the lime green sofa. Why it's lime green, I have no idea. It's just one of my favourite colours. So the lime green sofa was born and it's become a real thing. 
And if you go to, I don't visit Facebook, but if you go to Facebook, you'll find uh, the last homely house and the header for that is a sofa, lime green. Now I always say, I'm just gonna pass down some brownies now. And here come the chocolate biscuits. Well, I'm gonna make something to pass down the lime green sofa and I'm gonna do it right now. So I'm making, let's see what I'm making. I've got some bits and pieces together here. And so the first thing I've got is digestive biscuits, these things. This is digestive biscuits. And I'm gonna put them in this bag here so that I can smash them up. But I'm going to weigh all the ingredients out. And don't worry, I'll leave the recipe in the description below. This is milk chocolate. And I'm gonna put it in here over this pan so that it melts. So from now on, we'll have to weigh things out in here. I'm gonna put all of this milk chocolate in here without the paper. Come and have a look. There it goes. And this is metal, so it will actually do it really quite quickly. So, okay, so that's going to go in there and I'll use this when I need to stir it round. 125 grams of dark chocolate, which is what this one is. Not all of that. I get to save a bit of that to eat later. There we go. And that's going to go in as well. So we've got a mixture of chocolates. Now you can see here that I've also got white chocolate. Now, when I was buying this yesterday, knowing that Anna was going to come and help me to film this, and my hand went straight away to the white chocolate because she really, really likes it. So although the recipe doesn't have white chocolate in it, what this recipe is going to have is some chopped up chunks of white chocolate. And Anna's filming this at the moment. And if you could see the massive smile on her face, you'd know that I'd actually hit the jackpot there. Right. The next, one of the next things we need is golden syrup and I bought it in this squeezy, I don't usually have this in the house but I bought this for the for this particular recipe and um, we'll see how much we need of this now. It says 75 grams of golden syrup. Well guys, I'm going to guess. Okay, are you ready? 75 grams. There we go. That was absolutely accurate. I need a, a hundred grams of unsalted butter. Now I'll tell you a funny story about this. I was buying all of this yesterday in the supermarket uh, and it's I always shop in that supermarket and so I, you get to know people really well but one of my friends works there and I was telling her that I was going to be, she's a very, very, very good cook indeed. Extremely good cook. So I always tell her what I'm cooking uh, so that I get any tips from her and this recipe wants me to use unsalted butter wow that was clever 103 I've got to that'll do and so I told her I said and unsalted but she said oh no no you need to put a pinch of salt in because everything that you make with chocolate always tastes better with a pinch of salt and she's not wrong really is she so although I've used unsalted butter rather stupidly I'm going to put a little tiny pinch of salt in everything tastes better with a pinch of salt so we're going to let that just all melt together there and while that's doing that I'll prepare the things that are going to go in next which is the, the biscuits now these are as I said digested biscuits and I've got the right quantity there and I'm just going to hit them they're in a plastic bag, a sturdy one. But what's the best thing about this thing that I'm making here is you don't want it in really tiny crumbs. You actually do want some big bits of biscuit. So I'm going to leave some of them really quite big. So they're ready there, waiting to go in. And so I'll do the chocolate treatment for the chunks of white chocolate now. And so I'm, oh, this has got vanilla in. It's that lovely, what is this? Let's have a look. 
organic white chocolate made with fragrant Madagascan vanilla for a smooth and creamy chocolate. Ooh, Anna. Okay, I'm just going to chop this, clack this into bits now. This is the quickest recipe ever. It's almost not a recipe, really. I mean, I guess you could do it by eye. I've made this so many times over the years when you need a quick, sweet thing. But I think you'll love it down on the sofa. Which you know what this means, don't you? You're going to have to make it so that you can eat it while I'm talking about it. And then if you do that, you can put all your favourite ingredients in. OK. Is that enough, do you think? i do a little bit more. Go on, why don't we? Got it, haven't we? We might as well. So it's got three different types of chocolate in this, which I think will be lovely. Okay then, let's see how this is doing. I think life will go quicker if I cut this chocolate up. And when there's a bigger surface area, it'll melt quicker, won't it? So get this lot all cut up. The syrups in there, the butter, the two types of chocolate. And then the biscuits are going to go in, but then I'm also going to put in um, a few dried cranberries. Because I think that would be nice uh, to have those in there. So what I might do is just by eye, is just chuck a few cranberries in with the biscuits and then put all of this in with the biscuits so that it's an all-in-one sort of a cake. It's not cake, it's a uh, tiffin, that's what I'm making. There now. So all that's going to provide the structure for it when we get to that point, but this has to beautifully melt now. So are you getting hungry down there on the sofa? So while you're thinking about eating some of this, just pop down there and subscribe and ring the notifications bell so that you'll never miss when we post a video. And give me a like and a comment and a share. All of those things would be great. Nearly melted. I'm not worrying about tempering this chocolate and, you know, getting it up to temper like Hercules would do. The reason for that is I don't think this is going to last very long. I think we're going to be finished with this quite quickly. It's beautifully melted now. Oh, that's really hot. And now I'm going to take the structure parts and tip it in. So we've got the white chocolate, the biscuits and a few dried cranberries. In they go. Oh, this is going to be good. And I, I keep that bag for crushing biscuits, <laughs> if that's a thing that you do frequently. Now, don't worry about there being some big bits of biscuit in there. I can cut them in half or break them in half if they're too uh, big. But I quite like the look of that. So this isn't cooked at all, of course. It's going to go straight into the fridge and cool down. Just make sure that everything's nicely distributed. And what's happened with the hot chocolate, it's melted that white chocolate a little tiny bit, which I think is going to be lovely. So now 
I'm going to tip this into the, this is just a, a, a baking tin that's lined with baking parchment or greaseproof paper, which will keep, uh, which will make it a lot easier to get out because this stuff, uh, once it sets, it's, uh, it's uh, very stiff and hard to remove from the tin. That's why the paper is such a good idea. Okay. Oh, bit of chocolate at the bottom there. Okie dokie. And then now I'm just going to press it in the tin. You know what I'm doing. You've probably all made this hundreds of times. Oh, it's looking good. Make sure it's nice and even. And that's not quite finished. Because what we have to do next is chuck a load of Maltesers on top of them. Yes. This isn't in the recipe, but this was a special request from my editor and filmmaker. So we're going to get ourselves into these Maltesers and then just then just press them in so that they stay. I could have put them in but when I saw that the white chocolate was melting I thought I don't really want these to melt in the same way. So my hands are clean so I'm just going to make sure that everyone gets one or two of these in their, in their bite. Glacé cherries would have been nice in this, giving it a nice little red kind of look. What do you think about that? Make sure that they are well and truly in so that they set. Because what has to happen now, this has to go into the fridge for an hour and then cut it into really small squares. So it's very, very rich indeed. So if it comes past you on the sofa and you really like it, you can take two pieces. That's absolutely fine. I won't mind that. But just make sure that there's enough on there so that it reaches all the way to New Zealand. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to put it in the fridge now. So a while ago, one of the subscribers sent me a message to say that one of my videos had ads playing on it um, way back one of my earlier videos. Now, you know that I've got ads disabled on this channel. I don't want to have ads here. And so, of course, if there are ads on my videos, firstly, I haven't done it. And secondly, who's getting the revenue from that? It certainly isn't me. Now, I can't go back and check which video it might be because I've got that ad free premium thing. So if what I'm going to do, I'm going to post a comment and don't leave a comment in the main comments because it'll get lost, but I'm going to pin a comment. The first comment on this video is going to be pinned and it's going to be asking you if anyone else has seen any any videos of mine that have ads on. It certainly isn't my doing and I'd like to sort it out and find out why that happened. So I'm looking forward to hearing from anybody who um, who knows about that. So thank you to Melissa for giving me the heads up about that one. And then just a word about what's going on behind me here. This definitely isn't the final layout of this quilt, but uh, for the past few days, I've been uh, putting these blocks together and making this layout here. And this is what we're doing over on the Patreon channel for uh, what I call the alongs. Now, if you want to join the alongs or the themed videos every week or the live streams or whatever, please don't join Patreon at the end of the month. And today is the last day of February. Wait until the first or after of March because Patreon will take payment the day you join and again on the first of the month. So please remember that. If anybody's thinking of, of uh, popping along to Patreon to see what it is we're up to here, 
wait. You can always access the previous videos, but you won't get charged twice, which is uh, in quick succession, which is what I want to avoid. So come on, all you detectives, you find where the um, where the ads are on that video and let me know because I'm a bit vexed about that. No ads on this channel for as long as I can manage. OK, guys, um, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Won't we, Norma? We will with a bit more of this. Bye now. Pass this down now so you can help yourself.